We are live. Hello, everybody. There's a little bit of a delay, so we're going to give everybody a quick chance to join. But I am Laura Mandel. I'm the VP of Marketing here at Party Slate. I have Marley with me, who's our amazing, amazing customer success director, and this absolutely incredible panel that we are so excited to introduce you to if you don't know them already. We are going to cover all things Instagram today. So feel free, please put in the chat where you're calling in from. We've had people from all over the country and the world today, so we can't wait to hear from you. And of course, any questions that you have while we're waiting for people to do that, I'd love to introduce our panelists quickly. Natalie, I'll start with you if you want to do a brief intro. Oh, you're on mute, Natalie. I was checking to see if you were paying attention. <laughs> My name is Natalie from Deja Vu Sweets. We are located in lovely South Florida, and I create confections and desserts tables all across the world. So check us out. <laughs> Delicious looking confections. Thank you. Kristen, we would love to hear from you. Sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kristen Griffith Vandriot. I am the host of the Netflix TV show, The Big Flower Fight. And I am the owner and creative director of Wild Bloom, which is located in Seattle. We do floral and event design. Thank you. And Cece. Hi, everyone. I'm Cece Johnson, uh, founder and creative director of Cece New York. And while we're known for our amazing one of a kind wedding invitations, we also just aim to beautify your world and create products that are all just, again, aim to beautify your world and, and make your life more, more beautiful. Whether it's invitation stationery, we just launched puzzles. We're all about like just creating fun product for you. Love that. And I think we love that all of you have such different specialties. And I think that's really going to lend well to this, this amazing conversation. So we have so much to cover today, almost an overwhelming amount of knowledge. So I'm going to jump right in. Um, I think that a quick note before we begin, we're going to go back and forth. It's going to be a fun conversation with all the panelists. Feel free to ask questions. We'll field as many questions as we can. Instagram is a beast of a tool. Like there is so much that we could cover today that we can't possibly cover it all. So we're gonna get to as much as we can. We're really focused on the new tools and features that we want all of you to know about. And I just wanted to make a quick note that we actually have recordings from past webinars focused on Instagram. We would be happy to send those out. And if you have an area that you want us to dig deeper on for the future, we would love to hear that feedback too so that we can keep creating this great content for you. So we are gonna jump right in. Here's our agenda for this session. We're going to start out really helping you set a strong foundation for growth on Instagram. We'll talk about your Instagram profile, how to choose the right content. Then we'll talk a little bit about engagement metrics. We don't want to lose sight of the fact that it's really important to track how you're performing on Instagram so you know what type of content to post. And then we narrowed it down. It was pretty impossible. There's endless tools and features on Instagram, but we narrowed it down to five categories that we think is a great starting point for everybody tuning in today. And then we will, of course, end with an action plan. We love to give really actionable takeaways that you can really start implementing today for your business. So how to optimize your Instagram bio. So first we put everybody's handles up on the screen. Feel free to grab your phones and follow along with everybody. Their Instagrams are absolutely amazing. We'll have some examples to show along the way. But first I just wanted to hear from everybody how you, you created your Instagram bio. Why did you choose what you chose? How does it represent your brand? So Cece, I'd love to hear from you first. Sure. So I think honestly, the hardest part is actually doing your bio because it limits you to Instagram limits you to only a few words. Yes. So I found I was rewriting it a hundred times. And, and how do you choose succinct words that actually capture your target customer? And for us, we have so many different targets. It's not just a bride. You know, we do wedding, we do wedding invitations, we do baby announcements, we do bon bon mitzvahs. We, I told you guys we have our product line. So it was really hard for us to capture all of that. So we decided our, our tagline is beautify your world. So that's how we were like beautify your world through creative design for branding, weddings and entertaining and living. So I tried to make it more all encompassing. So you really are just grabbing them in right away and, you know, just pinpointing exactly what you do. I love that. And, and you noted they do limit you to 150 characters, which sounds like a lot, but it's really not a lot. So feel free to rewrite and rewrite until you find what works for you. Kristen, what works for you and your brand? Well, uh, it's a little different for me because I am my brand versus my business being the front of uh, what people are seeing. Right. Um, so prior to the show coming out, my Instagram handle was wild bloom floral. And then I found that after uh, 
it, uh, the premiere happened and people really wanted to sort of learn more about me and learn about my viewpoint on flowers. So I had to really step from behind the arrangement and put myself in front of the arrangement. So a lot of my bio, it actually flipped completely. Like there was no personal information in there. And now it's sort of like, breaks down how you can get in touch with me a for like professional inquiries and then b how do you know i I think i know that face but how do you know that face so we can just like go ahead and get that out of the way um and then through that uh it provides links to sort of the more businessy stuff i feel like cc and natalie are very business oriented while i sort of had to flip that to be more behind the curtains and see the person behind the flowers, which is very different for me personally. Yeah, but I just want to actually add something because I was I was the opposite on CC New York and then I was getting in my own way because I have a big team. There's 20 of us. Yeah. And I realized I had to give the the world, if you will, a way to get to know me still because I am still the face of my brand. So if you yeah. notice it says founder CC Johnson, so you can right. write text to my other handle, which is CC Johnson, where you can dive all the way into my right. life me and my family yeah. and all the hats that I wear from fashion yeah. lover to mom to entrepreneur and artist. So I totally feel you. And I think yeah. like, you know, it's interesting hearing your perspective, but you can have both or you can decide to just do it all in one. Right. Absolutely. I'm sure so many people can relate to that on this call that a lot of people are their brands, Kristen, just like you were saying in CC and some people prefer to stay more behind the scenes. So I think that it, it goes both ways. Absolutely. Natalie, how did you come up with your bio and what was important to you? Actually, it was showcasing what we are able to create. And now I'm showcasing myself now. Um, we had, or should I say, I had a baby during this lovely pandemic. So I was hiding myself because I didn't have hair for a while. So now that it decided to come out, I was like, okay, let's do this. Let's show what we're capable of doing, um, creating confections, creating des desserts, spreads, and luxurious cakes. So it was choosing certain words to make sure they know who we are. And then now it's like, okay, come and see the face because I'm also here. And my little quality director too, who's only one years old, she travels around <laughs> with us all the time. So she comes and goes, but she makes sure that we keep everything looking lovely in the front. I end. love that. I love yeah. that. <laughs> a couple other tips really quick and then we're going to move on. But I think that you all have such beautiful logos and photos for your mm -hmm. images. So it's really important to choose something super recognizable, whether it's your photo or logo or a beautiful picture that you love um, and then using some sort of link tool. So whether it's a link in bio tool, your own website, some way for people to get from Instagram to your website or a platform that's important to you. So this is just a great way to get you set up. The other thing we really want to focus on before we jump into the tools is how to select the right Instagram content. So this is, again, this is what has worked for Party Slate. We're going to hear from the panelists in just a second, but what works for you may not work for somebody else. So we're just sharing what's worked for our brands. It's just advice that might help you get started. For Party Slate, these are, like, every time I see these photos, I'm just blown away because the content that we get on the platform is just so stunning. But they are clearly unique. Like, some of these things are things that we've never seen before light and bright. They tell a story with the photos. Some of them are zoomed in on, on the details, like that T installation in the middle, where some of them are zoomed out shots. So you want a variation. And then you, again, you want to consider what's relevant for your audience. Is it timely? Is it trends? Like for us with Party Slate, people always wanted to see what's new, what's different, what's trending. And then of course, prioritizing diversity and inclusion. That's something that's become really important for Party Slate this past year to make sure that we're paying special attention to that, especially on Instagram. So I'm gonna turn it to the panelists. These are some of our favorite photos of your Instagrams. There were too many to choose from. Mm -hmm. Natalie, I literally need these strawberries in my life right now. Can you tell yeah. us why, why, other than the obvious, these photos are all stunning, but why did you choose this photo perhaps for your feed and like what made you select this? I love strawberries. Let's start there. <laughs> um, and also the lighting and the photographer was just amazing by capturing the image for us and just the location itself. It's the bath club. So for us, it was lighting. You captured our lovely strawberries and the little fun items we have in the pivot to to make, uh, of course, the wedding fun throughout the night. So it was truly just capturing the image. And of course, without our art, the photographer can't catch it. So she did an amazing job. Erica is just 
flawless in everything that she does actually. So I love that. And you made a good point. You previewed one of our tools that, that you tagged the bath club. So we're going to get to that a little bit later. So I love that you said that Kristen, this day, and I know this was sort of a theme of things that you've posted throughout on your feed. How did you select this series of photos? Why does this resonate with your audience? Well, people want to see the flowers at the end of the day that's, you got to give the people what they want. So I think that if there's ever anything that I'm excited about, and this is really what I want people to really sort of like take from this panel, is that there's no magic bullet when it comes to content. There's no thing that you're going to be like, oh, that was a home run. Let me keep posting that same thing over and over and over and over and over. Sometimes I'll post something that is literally the same photo that I like from a year ago that I just deleted and repost. And it sometimes it does amazing and other times it flops. So I think that for me, the way I look at content is I try to post the things that excite me, the things that I'm going to feel proud of putting out there, the things that I feel like are really going to represent my style, what I want to be seeing in my industry, and and also with a little bit of fun and flair. Florist, and I'm sorry to say this to my florist friends, we can take ourselves a little seriously, a little too seriously. So anytime that I can sort of break down that wall and demystify the floor world with a little bit of tongue in cheek, I will take that opportunity. So that's why the caption is so silly, right? So I, I think it. that that's really sort of how I look at, at content. Um, because when I post things where I think I'm being really scientific about it, I'm like, oh, it's a Tuesday at 9 a.m. and my target audience wants it to be at this time, inevitably it does not perform the way that I want to do it. And I sit there beating myself up and racking my brain and pulling my hair out. So I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna post the stuff that I'm excited about when the spirit moves me. And that's the stuff that really works. Our, my content ma marketing manager is probably laughing to herself behind the scenes because we we are just blown away every time. We'll post this grand, stunning, beautiful photo that our team is absolutely obsessed with. And it might not do as well as something that maybe we're a little bit jaded because yeah. we're like, oh, well, we've seen this before. Like, I don't know if that's really going to resonate. But at the end of the day, something that's not new to you might be new to somebody else. Okay. So it's it you really can be very surprised by what right. performs well. Yeah. CC, this this stunning photo. So obviously the the dance floor design is stunning, but it's such a beautiful room shot that really encompasses the entire event. How did you choose this photo and um why for your feed? Yeah, well I mean I just want to kind of echo what Kristen said and everyone, you know, I'm honored that I'm selected to be up here with you guys, but Instagram is for sure the hardest. It's a love hate. Like I'm not gonna lie. Every day we're like, yay, just what he's saying. Some things before we get three thousand likes, and then the next time, like I might post it, and again, it's like three hundred or not even thirty. You know, you're like, what is going on? So it is constantly right. a game, and it's a mental thing that you're. I like play tennis with my brain and Instagram every day. I'm like, what's the right thing to do? <laughs> so while we're going to give you advice, it's not necessarily like I. I think Kristen's right. You got to go with your gut. But me being, I'm also come from a um, branding background and I'm a big stickler on your Instagram is your portfolio. So you really need to think about it. Like who cares if it doesn't perform that well? It's just like the likes are just, they mess with your head. Yes. You should be critiquing your own feed based on what you want the world, how you want the world to see you. So what I personally like to do, and I have this little worksheet, if you guys want it, DM me or email me, I'm happy to send it to you. It's basically like, you think of it like you have your buckets, your brand buckets, which buckets to me means your filters or your feed, like your, excuse me, your assets. So for, for us, it's like, we have weddings to talk about. We have the babies to talk about. We have the mitzvahs to talk about. Like we want to show all the facets that we do. If mm -hmm. our whole feed was covered in weddings, then a mitzvah person would be like, you know, or a corporate client or someone who wants to hire us to do their logo design would be like, they only do weddings. Right. So if you think about if you could label three to five, if you can define three to five facets, that is your brand. And you feed that facet every day or every of uh, every post, meaning like Mondays are going to be about weddings. Tuesday are going to be about the next facet. Do you see what I'm saying? So 
one of our facets is event like the dance floor is the like you know we have we launched a collaboration with nuage linens and so our linens are now we we are able to brand the events with our graphics so this is my artwork that i love these photos because it's like not only is it a stunning design and and photography but it shows off the artistry and it also gives us an excuse to talk about our CC for Nuage collab and how yeah. we can design from the linens and the invitations and the menus, we can now design your dance floor to match. But we are doing it in a sequence of, again, going back to these brand facets. So I found, because I'm busy running my business and doing client work and doing the art and painting and everything, that it was driving me crazy. I couldn't just do it on the whim. It's really like, it's really, like just drives me bananas. <laughs> so, so I try, I try to have the structure. And when you take yourself away from the day to day and you and the spinning, you know how many of us have gone down the rabbit hole of like I'm just gonna scroll through my feed to get inspired, but I'm not inspired yeah, because yes, yes. I actually don't have anything to post, and everyone's looks good and mine just suck, and you just like basically <laughs> spin for an hour or more, right? Like let's just be real. I'm sorry. No, no. It just happens That's to so us. true. That's so, such good advice to CC about the the facets that you mentioned. We're actually ending the day with a whole session all about differentiators. So that's that's a great segue yeah. in how these things are all connected. Yeah. So we have actually a question. Just we have a question that fits in really nicely. Yeah. Um, so CC, uh, one of the questions was: I know Instagram is super relevant for weddings and corporate, but how is it best to use for mitzvah clients? And I know that you mentioned that was one of your buckets that you you definitely yeah. try to reach on. Do you feel like? mitzvah parents or you know the people planning the mitzvahs use instagram as much as the other I types of events. everyone is one way or another looking at social and even if the mom or the parents are maybe not on instagram or not as active as their kids they're still gonna go look because their daughter's gonna come up or their son's gonna be like look 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 i saw this on insta so you want to make it as easy as possible for them to find it and, and i know we're going to get into highlights but like it's really about that filtering mm -hmm. and also only post your own content. That's just my personal opinion. I mean, Party Slate's different because they're like editorial coverage of the whole industry, but nothing drives me more crazy when people are just sharing other stuff just to share it because they're so desperate. Like, what is that doing for your business? So please, please, please promise yourself right now to only show your own work because it's misleading to the client, the potential customer of what you really can do. And it's also not fair to those who were the original creators. So. And we're going to get into tagging, which we are crediting and, and how important crediting is. And I think that, you know, if for some reason you really think it is relevant to post other work, which CC, I, I completely understand that perspective. You all do such a good job of crediting your partners because everybody deserves credit for the work that they do. So right. I think that that's such an important topic. I right. think speaking of crediting, when we at Party Slate, you know, we are more editorial. We want to post the best of the best out there. We want to make sure that we're reviewing every single event that gets uploaded onto Party Slate we of course pride ourselves on crediting and make sure that we include credits with every single post that we do it's super important for us and just a reminder that for our instagram because cc that's a really good point is that party slate reviews every single event that was uploaded to party slate to make sure that it's a good fit for different channels so whether it's instagram or our our editorial section or Facebook or LinkedIn, there's different audiences everywhere. So we really consider what's a good fit for Instagram specifically. And then here are just a few things that our team looks for. So creative ideas, specific descriptions, again, those full event partner credits, and then anything that's super relevant at that time, holidays or events or, or anything else. So I just wanted to give a quick reminder because that is really important to know is how, how does Party Slate find the content that we do post? Because it's sometimes it's not our own. Sometimes it is our launch parties or something else, but we make sure to curate the best of the best that's out there. Um, speaking of engagement metrics, so I love what some of you said that you said, you know, measurement matters and you want to post what matters, but at the same time, you also want to just post what you love and what you know is going to resonate with your audience. I think it should be a hybrid of both. And, and if you're curious about how do I know what, what matters, what engagement metrics matter, we sort of narrowed it down to three areas. I think that people have gotten really obsessed with this idea of likes, like, let me get as many likes as possible. And, and yes, that is important to a certain extent, but you want to strive for really savable, shareable content. That means that it's people really love it enough to share it with people that they're collaborating collaborating with or their mom or their sister or their brother or, or somebody that they're collaborating with on an event specifically. And if you're curious where to find this, we put some screenshots in here. So it's really easy for you to access. If you're looking at one of your Instagram 
Instagram posts and feel free to grab your phone and take a look right now. If you have a business account, there's an area that's called view insights and you can actually see how a specific post is performing. So it'll give you some indication, like maybe you were obsessed with this photo, like Kristen was saying before, and or maybe it, it quote unquote flopped, even though, you know, how much do we really care about that? We still want to post what we love, but it is good just to be in touch with what is performing and what's not. I don't know how often you guys ever use this tool, but if, if anybody wanted to share, you know, what's important to you, is there a metric that you look for specifically to see how your content is performing? For me, yes. I actually look at the saves. Um, I currently do not care for the likes anymore. Yes. I had the highs and the lows of the likes from maybe 50 to 1,000, maybe 100 to 300. Um, at this time, it's for the save. So as long as I see people saving our work, we are know we're doing our job. So that's me. Yeah, the saves, regards the shares, to, right? Yes, it's the saves, the shares. I've seen a lot of yes. shares, but the saves for me are like, we did it. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, I love that. It. Especially because you think about like the long lead times of people getting engaged or maybe not engaged and they're just they're kind of saving their favorites for when and then they go tap into that later. So I agree. The saves are everything. I love that. And this is just, again, a quick way. We'll distribute this deck afterwards. But if you're curious, if you're like, I have no idea, how do I know what performs well? This is just a quick thing that you can do. Check in with your posts and, and see how they're doing. So without further ado, we have those five features and areas, and we're going to use lots of examples from this group. The first one might seem like a no brainer, but we did identify some specific reasons that you should be using Instagram stories. So we put many tips here and bullets. These are just general best practices. Again, something else might work better for your business, but across the board, across the industry, this is some, some pretty general information. I think something to always remember, and this is something that stands out to me, is that 85% of people watch videos without sound. So while we love video, we know that video is super engaging and important. It's also important to balance out the video with some text to let people know what they're seeing. Like if I'm, you know, in my daughter's nursery and I'm watching videos on my Instagram, don't tell my husband I do that, but I'm not going to watch it with video because it's going to wake her. Too. <laughs> but I think that you always want to remember how are people going to be engaging with this content? What's important to them? Use things like clear calls to action. Parties that love using polls, like what, what is our audience engaging with? You can see people love that wicked dance floor. Um, and tell a story with your Instagram stories. I'd love to turn it over um, to a couple of our panelists. Natalie, I think that you did this awesome Q&A a few days ago. What, what about this Q&A like, was so exciting to you? Why do you think that this is important for your brand? Because I need to know. <laughs> we needed to know because we, we create vegan, but we don't get a lot of vegan clients. We have lots of gluten free clients. But I was like, let's just throw it out there and see what happens. And of course, we had a huge turnaround and I should have actually um, gone further to see if what was the response behind it, per se. But that same day, we received so many inquiries because they swiped up. So it was like, okay, wow. do some more items to see what actually occurs and happens. So it was like, we love that cake. Can you make it gluten free? We're happy you do gluten free. What more can you make gluten free? So we were actually excited just to use the feature to say we That's did. That's awesome. It's kind of like your own data gathering tool that you can yeah, use exactly. tools to understand more about your audience. I love that. Ah, yes. And Cece, this was, I think, a, a, a gorgeous behind the scenes of an installation. Tell us a little bit about the story behind this Insta story. Yeah, no, this is actually um, another dance floor with the same Navy Shelby print that we designed now in the round. So again, just it's ironic that you picked both those dance floors. Um, it's I'm with it clearly. <laughs> but I think, you know, for us, we really want to tell it. I try to think of the, the tiles or the <clears throat> the panels or the slides as you're telling a story. So we did, we started off with the bout this weekend and the, the shout team is actually putting the floor together. And then the next slide is like the finished look of it. So again, I'm trying to educate always our, our um, followers, like how much work goes into the artistry and to the, the behind the scenes of it. So, and people, I personally love seeing what goes into it too. So in this case, we happen to have the content, like I'm not always lucky enough to be able to go because I, I like what the invitations and you know our our role isn't necessarily always at the event like a floral designer would be they have to show up so I'm always like desperate I'm like give me something give me something you know um but in this case I happen to have it but I think for the stories like to Natalie's point is that you can use them for information gaining or you know like you can drop little hints if you want to push something um and this if you have more than 10,000 followers the swipe ups are awesome because yeah. you can lead them right to you're just like hanging the carrot like hey take a look you know and um and again I feel like even if you just 
like don't beat yourself up because even if you just get one lead out of it or one person being like, oh my gosh, I love it. Like follow back up with them, you know, and talk more. The polls yeah. are also really cool too because for example, we just launched, launched Puzzles for Mother's Day. It's a very fun, novel, different, unique thing that no one would probably think CC would do, but I personally like love it. I've been obsessed with them for my since childhood and the pandemic and whatever. But I, my point is, is we did a poll on stories being like, how many of you guys love puzzles? And then everyone who said yes is now a potential customer to be like, hey, did you see we launched them? Like, so sorry. Oh, I love that little note saying check out the collection and hope that they would be like oh my gosh I love puzzles so much that now I'm gonna go get one so you can use that to your advantage and no matter what your angle is or what you're offering I love that and I think you mentioned the swipe up with 10,000 followers and a lot of people tuning in maybe you don't have 10,000 followers yet and that's completely fine before I think a lot of us had 10,000 followers in the early days of Instagram you can use a link in bio tool you can break text over the photo you could you know lead people to the next frame it's all about like further engagement with your brand so yeah, yeah. don't worry yeah, don't worry if it doesn't lead to leads or if people aren't responding to you right away. It's all about building your brand equity and getting to that point. Everyone will get there and it's it's just about patience with your brand. Totally. Tagging. So I mentioned a little bit about this um, with the way Party Slate tags our partners. I pulled a couple of examples. We tag all over the place. We want to make sure that the amazing event professionals that work so hard to create this amazing content get the full credit for it in as many places as possible. So there's a couple of buckets of tagging that we think it's really important to prioritize for a lot of different reasons, not just for giving credit, but it's a way that you can be discovered. It's a way that you are building that network and that community that you, you've worked so hard to curate. And it's a way that you can just further those relationships with the partners that you've worked so hard to connect with. So there's a couple different tags. So hashtags, we like to consider these SEO for Instagram. It's a big discoverability tool. People can actually search and follow hashtags. You'll see that, in, or I'm sorry, that screenshot on the right is a way that you can actually start searching. If you have a topic that you think is super relevant to your photo, like wedding table, you can actually see what hashtags use that phrase and then add the hashtag to your post. And you can add up to 30 hashtags per post. So we recommend taking advantage of that as much as you can. Then geotags, Natalie, you alluded to this earlier in, in our presentation. You want to tag the venue, the city, the neighborhood, something about your location so that when people maybe are searching for a city, if they're looking for more information on Instagram about Chicago or Los Angeles or New York, your photo could actually show up in that search, which is incredible. And then account tags. So of course, this is all about tagging your partners, crediting your partners and, and building on that relationship. So you all do such a beautiful job with this. Kristen, I'll turn it over to you first. I think that, you know, obviously your feed is especially unique. You are your brand. But when you do work with partners, why do you think it's so important to make sure that you're tagging them on Instagram? Well, I think you really nailed it and said that we want to share in the work, it's especially yeah. if you have good working relationships. Not everyone that I've you know worked with, I want to work with again. So <laughs> especially if I'm really enjoyed that process and that creative um, journey that we shared, I really love to just uplift those people as well. Um, and then I think it's really smart if you can in sort of a savvy way present yourself as a package, right? You hire this photographer, but those flowers were bomb.com. Ooh, let me go, let me get both of them together. Or yeah. I really love that event designer and those flowers that the event designer had there were amazing. I think the same thing for really all of us can apply. It's a relationship and you can start to, in many ways, piggyback off of the um, notoriety of your peers. Um, so that's really good. In terms of uh, hashtags, I like to look for hashtags that actually are further down the list. So yeah. if I type in flowers and I see it, there's like 47 million posts of flowers. I'm not using that hashtag. I'm like going to scroll all the way down to the bottom to see the ones that have like 125,000 posts on it or less. That's um, so a great tip. Simply yeah. because you get lost in the shuffle. Like who the heck's going to see your photo if there's 47 million other photos that are using that hashtag it makes it harder so if you can choose a hashtag with a much smaller number and your quality is really good then you're sort of targeting yourself and positioning yourself to be at the top 
of a niche that you're already in anyway, because it's your industry. Yes. I love that. Such a good recommendation. And you don't, you can take some time to really search for those hashtags that aren't just relevant for you, but that you actually have a chance of showing up and if people really yeah. discover your brand. So I think that that's so important. Yes. Natalie or, or Cece, do you have anything to add? You're, of course, the photos are stunning, but really it's to highlight the incredible work that you all did to tag those partners there. He I said mean, it all. <laughs> my, my only add-on would be I think it's again going back to posting authentic um, content like this photo that you see in as my example you don't really see the CC menu or the specific CC work but we always want to make it clear that it's there is a creative team and I actually use the word creative team because I hate the word vendors I feel like it's like we're like a vending machine like do you want skittles or skittles? <laughs> like all about like changing it if possible but anyways i always use creative team and i always make sure that everyone is credited like in you know in the movie credits if you will and then yeah. you really always tag them because the tag on the photo catches their attention and they're usually excited about it so it in immediately in in uh increases the engagement because usually they're yay oh my god i love this one they're commenting right away so yes. I, you know how many are listed here like 10 maybe so you automatically have 10 eyes zooming to your picture hopefully and like liking it and commenting and engaging with it that then actually drives up your instagram what is it like ability in the algorithm so i feel like all that just really helps when you don't tag i don't think people get really notified if unless they go and look into their their tags and deep in the instagram messaging and stuff so i found that that works really well um and i'm just a big admin adamant adamant about can we talk about always making sure everyone gets proper credit especially all the hard work that was done and staying exactly. up in 24 hours so definitely exactly. Yes. Exactly. and i never want anyone thinking that we did all that work you know i want to make sure that everyone anyone who's looking at the photo understands the real creative team behind it and that it isn't just one person so important Marley, I'm going to pause. I, I see a lot of activity in the chat. Do we have any questions? Otherwise, I can keep moving. Yeah. So what if you search for a hashtag and it doesn't exist? Does it make sense to create your own? Yes. 100%. Of course. Yes. That's a Do great it. Question. it depends on what it is. It depends yeah. on if you want it to be very specific to you. Like okay. if you're trying to claim it, right? I something that I say a lot that's sort of a catchphrase of mine is is flower friends. I'm always greeting you and my audience as my flower friends. So I definitely use that hashtag a lot. I haven't created it, but I dominate it because right. I yeah. use it so <laughs> I use it so okay. much. Yeah, so already say it does the same yeah. thing. I I think that if I, I, would, I would echo what Kristen said, I think that you don't want to reinvent the wheel completely, like use positive indicators from what already exists on, on Instagram. But if you're like, I know I specialize in this thing, or it's my my personal brand or my professional brand, then then you really want to lean into that. So I think that's a great question. That's a great question. If you don't mind, I'm going to add one more tip. Yeah. I use it. And I think this is helpful. If you think about how you know your customers using Instagram as seeing your portfolio. So as you, I told you before, we have so many different facets. So I have hashtags that are specific as tools. So CC watercolors, for example, right. CC mm -hmm. wedding, CC mitzvah. And mm -hmm. then my sales team can easily click on the CC mitzvah tab or hashtag and see all the work because it, how annoying is it to, again, to scroll and kind of struggle and, you know, on the fly be like, oh, I can't find the image that you want. Right. And then to the other question about do myths that people don't really look at um you know instagram now you could be like look here's all the this and it just automatically filters all your work so the more unique your hashtag can be to your brand the better versus just being like bot mitzvah or, or you know bar mitzvah you're doing cc mitzvah that makes it actually only hopefully everyone's using you know it's our tag if that makes absolutely. sense absolutely and great. i think the best the best for folders if you yeah put, and folders you know. yeah sorting everything. I think in the beginning of the pandemic, Party Slate really wanted to support, you know, the fact that we will be getting back together soon. So we created this hashtag about celebrate soon. And then, you know, when event professionals tagged us using that hashtag with, you know, memories of past events, we would repost them. So I, I love that, CC, that it's sort of a content gathering tool that if you want people to use yeah. a certain hashtag in order to keep track of what they're tagging you in or what type of content they're posting, I think that's a really strategic way to use, ha use hashtags as well. Definitely. 
I'm going to keep us moving to my personal favorite section. So reels. Um, I think that reels can feel a little bit intimidating, but I think that they are one of the best tools for discoverability. I think the best thing to remember about reels, which are really just video clips, is that users who don't follow you can actually find your reels. It can show up in a way that in their discover tab when they're actually looking for new content. And you can use hashtags the same way you do, just like we were talking about it for feed posts. So great discoverability tool. Obviously, a lot of people listening have amazing access to your partner's work if you partner with a videographer or if you're on set behind the scenes using your iPhone, but you can use pretty raw footage from your iPhone and, and make it super engaging. So there's no need to worry, you know, is my quality good enough? It's it's all about, is it relatable content? Is it something that's gonna resonate with my audience? Um, and this is just an example. We did a series recently of our past launch events and the different types of venues that you can find on Party Slate. So this was an amazing partner of ours for our Boston launch party. It was this incredible restaurant called Hajoko in Boston. Um, and we wanted to make it known that, you know, if you want a funkier vibe, if you want a little bit of a different type of venue, you can find that on Party Slate. And I know all of you have endless examples of these amazing reels that you've created. Some are more personal, iPhone photos, super casual, some are more professional. So I'd love to turn it over to you. What are your thoughts on reels? Do you think they're too time intensive? Are you finding them that they're paying off for your brand? How would you recommend that this group use reels for their business? Who wants to go first? <laughs> go first. Um, I find that reels are an amazing tool for keeping you top of mind. But keeping you top of mind, keeping you in people's faces. Um, I find that, and this is sort of my like push pull love hate relationship that I have with Instagram. It's that, and I was saying this to my husband the other day, is I would spend so much time finessing what's going into my feed editing the photo, getting all the colors right, making sure the lighting is beautiful, just so it's this like stunning presentation. And then I could take a reel with my grimy camera lens, <laughs> not even in focus, the color looks like garbage, and it can just blow up and go through the roof, right, in terms of engagement. And so that, again, it makes me just sort of go back to what I was saying originally is the way Instagram works is it is there to monetize the time of the viewer, right? We use it as a tool to engage with our audience. But you have to understand what Instagram's goal is, is they value your time. So if what they're pushing out right now internally, I got it. I got an entire box and a huge box from Instagram that was telling me, oh, do reels. Here's reels. They sent me a skateboard. I don't even skateboard. What that told me was is they are investing. They're investing in this new like tether, this new tool. And they really want their audience, regular old folks who aren't businesses, to engage in the reels. So they're going to reward people like us with pushing us up to the top in terms of yeah. visibility, right? So it, it's a very strong push and pull between like, oh my gosh, do I have to have all this quality? Or am I going to use this to play the game? And right. what's the game that once you understand what the Instagram game is, which is they just want you to be engaging. They're competing with TikTok. It's their yeah. shareholders, right? Getting, pulling back the curtain. Then you can use it for all of your advantages. So if you want to do really fabulous professional videos that are only 15 seconds long and it took you 16 hours to make, Forget good it. on you. Good on you. <laughs> if you're like me, who has a three-year-old running around and you're like, I can't do it. it. Can't do it. And I no, think when I was looking at when I was looking through your feeds, some of all of your best performing, I think, are very clearly like on your iPhones, that they yeah. it's super engaging, yeah. it's natural, and it feels like it's content that you want to watch. Natalie, yours, I mean, you're like, you know, going around these beautiful desserts, clearly on your iPhone, and they're some of my favorite videos. They, <laughs> you could be surprised how I try to create them. You don't hear the fun quality control manager usually in the background because I'm trying to edit them, make them look beautiful and I'm like I'm gonna do it and then you hit the button and she starts yeah. screaming so yeah. it's like do it, get it I don't yeah. want to do it no more you know type of thing yeah. so um it's a love and hate relationship I have to agree See? everyone needs to go easier on ourselves all of us right yes. 
so easy for us. It's hard all around. It's hard yeah. all around. And it's, it's you want to do it, and then something halts you, and then you come back and do it. So, but yeah, Mom, I'm I trying to be. Yes. I have, a, I have a question that kind of ties into this. So can you talk a little bit more about reels versus stories or grid posts and like how to take advantage of which one to use when and how do you decide when you're going to do one or the other? Um, yeah. So, okay. I, Go I, there's a hierarchy for me. <laughs> there's a hierarchy. So in my feed, I think Cece said it, that feels like, okay, it's a little bit more permanent. It's a little bit more fixed. If I want to find out the quality of someone or quality of a brand, I go into their feed. So I sort of hold that in a much higher regard. Um, I put things that matter more into my feed just because it feels more permanent. The stuff that I really am just sort of like, this is my opinion. This is what I care about. It's only going to last 24 hours. That really goes into my stories. That's stuff that like I'm excited to share. That's where I will share things that are inspiring me, sharing things that um, are other people's work. That I'm just like, go support this. I, I have a big push right now in my own business to really uplift uh, Black artists in the wedding community just because I'm like, you never see us in that space. So I'll be constantly posting in my stories, go follow this person, go follow that person. If you live here and you are looking for a black bookstore, go over there. Um, so I use my stories as more like, uh, like a communication tool. And then my reels, that's just like fun, stupid stuff. Just because I've sort of <laughs> surrendered the quality factor, right? I'm not so precious about it like I am about things in my feed. So I that's where I'll do the fun videos that really were just taken on my iPhone that I did in five minutes where I look a mess, hair's not done, face isn't on, shoes are on backwards, or the whole nine yards, just a mess. Because that to me is like, what that's can the best, That's the best content yeah. though, that's what people I want think, to see. Yeah, yeah, I think you have to, like going back to again, I'm such a like detailed person where you have your reasons for each. And I love what Kristen said. And like, it, think of your reels as like, you can even take the person behind the scenes of how you did it. Like mm -hmm. if you're an event planner or you're at a floral designer and you're there creating or like doing um, a, a time-lapse of making a gorgeous bouquet, like put that in your reel. And, and Instagram is favoring reels, like there's no tomorrow. So it just boosts the love, right? So like if you have videos, put them in, in your reels. You only have 15 or 30 seconds. So you have to think about what's the message. I also love that you can do like little snippets, like a couple seconds of the beginning, then the middle. Like I do, I use that for the, the artistry. Like people mm -hmm. don't realize that I actually paint all the work that you see. Like those flowers on the dance floor, I, I they came from my hand. So you can see the peony in the first reel. Like also, I've noticed that your first slide needs to be really, really like eye catching because then that gets the person in. If you're not using text, text is another benefit for reels because it, people are not listening to sound always, yeah. even though music is good. So there's, if you think about it, like taking your, your viewer behind the scenes, giving them a little bit more of like the story of how you made it or how you do it, like brand building there, I think that's helpful. And I definitely think you have to be doing all to answer someone's question. You need to be doing stories, you need to be doing reels. I know it's a lot, but that's kind of like in the feed. Also, you should always post your reel to the feed, but you, you have an option to do a cover picture. So to Kristen's point, if you want your feed to always look great, then you can make sure that you upload a beautiful photo that would look great on the still feed, but when they go to play it, it would go into the raw reel. So that's a trick around it because you get a lot more eyes when you post your reel to your feed. Go yes. to see. That's yeah, super important. important. And I think that's why we're trying, you know, it is a lot to handle and we know Instagram, you could spend your whole day on Instagram and all of a sudden be like, it's six o'clock, what happened to the whole day? So okay. we really tried to narrow it down to five key areas and even tagging. Tagging is part of these other tools that you're supposed to be using. So it seems overwhelming, but if you could even start with just reels and your feed and insta stories you would be in such a good place i think we're going to keep moving along this conversation is so good and i don't want to run out of time so the next area is igtv so more video i think that this is an area that requires a little more time a little more attention it's another video tool you're probably all saying oh my gosh another video tool i don't have time for this that's okay it does not have to be something powerful right away um, but I think that if you do want tips, if you're looking to get started on IGTV, an example of how Party Slate uses them is we repurpose our content. And I think that everybody on the panel is saying that that's the best way to get started. We took all of our launch party videos and created a series on IGTV 
and just reposted all of our launch party videos. So it's more engaging content, it's more content about our brand, and it's more ways for people to discover us, but we're not reinventing the wheel. We're not really creating anything new. And Kristen and Cece, you do such an amazing job with this. You do interviews, Kristen, you do a flo floral arranging. There's so many great examples of ways that you could create really engaging content. Yeah, I think I'm lucky because I also have a television persona that I need to like that people are eager to see. So I can really go off topic a lot of times. Like I think if you even look on the bottom of that post, it says tops and bottoms. That's like a TV show, an IGD TV show where we literally review RuPaul's Drag Race. So it's not always, I'm lucky that I don't have to be super linear in yeah. my um in my sort of like world of the industry. And I think that's what's great about IGTV is it can be used to show more of your personality in terms of reels and whatnot. Also, if you remember, IGTV is literally anything that's just over a minute. Exactly. So 15 seconds can still be viewed as an IGTV. And when they first launched the feature, again, Instagram really rewarded people for using IGTV. Now, not so much. Their algorithm has changed. Okay. So it's just another opportunity for you to stay in the game. Like you have to understand the Instagram game in order to play it and use it to your benefit. I think that's what's so frustrating is yeah. seems feels like, oh my gosh, it's always changing. I thought the football, <laughs> football was I think that's a key. And I'm sure we're gonna get questions about yeah. that. Like, how do you beat the algorithm? Like, how do I know what I'm supposed to be doing? And the truth is, is like Kristen, like you're saying, like it changes all the time and nobody yeah. really knows because they keep it so close. Marley, do we have a question yeah. about that? I feel you like we gotta try. You just gotta try. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember yeah. we were talking about this as, as a group and we were saying how just when you think you've figured it out, oh, it's something new comes into the mix. Yeah. And so I, I think a question is just how do you manage all of the different ways that you can use Instagram and what is the best frequency? Like how often are you posting? Do you have it, a whole calendar set up or, you know, is this just like willy nilly? Oh, I love this. I'm going to put it on a, you know, on my Instagram story. I would go back to again, my little guideline, like think of it, pick, start out slow and pick one day. One day I'm gonna do a reel. The next day I'm gonna do a post. The next day I'm gonna do an IGTV. You know, like we, for our IGTVs, I decided, I'm like, I need to let people know that we're branding designers. Everyone in this pandemic is going through like this time suddenly that we've given, you know, the gift of time and we're all critically uh, re like critiquing our own businesses and fixing our own marketing. So I was like, I want to help other small businesses with our branding and create logos for them and those who want the makeover. So anyways, I decided to use my IGTV because I'm like, can't sit there and build a gorgeous floral arrangement like Chris can or <laughs> create some amazing cooking tutorial like Natalie can. I'm like my, my stuff's kind of boring. Like you're sitting in front of a computer, like moving text yeah. around a page. I'm like, that's boring. Like what, what can I be exciting? So I just kind of challenged myself to find my little thing. And, and for us, it was like, I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to present to the client literally on IGTV live, the original, they've never seen the design. I'm presenting to the client live to the client and to you guys watching, and you all get to participate in the feedback. And so that's what you see here. These are all branding series and every cl client who goes through it, it's like a win-win situation because they get exposure. They, then people watching it, get to watch it and say, Oh, it's maybe yes. branding isn't so intimidating you know so it's like a win-win all around and then again going back to the portfolio we now have my team my sales team now has these series to show to potential leads who are thinking about like what's it like to go through a rebranding period process i'm scared of it and you go here just watch it's actually really fun and like it's amazing and I think taking risks, like, you know, it's a, and we have a lot of templates we can actually send out after this. We have an Instagram strategy template. We know it's overwhelming. Like we are here to help you get started. That's the whole point of this presentation, but like taking a risk within reason, of course, is not going to be the end all be all of your business. Like post it just like Cece and Kristen and Natalie have all been saying, post it, see what happens. If it's not your best performing piece of content, learn from that and move on. Post what you love. Don't get too hung up on the algorithm. Cause like we're all saying, by the time you figure it out, going to be completely different. So focus on something else. We are get, getting dangerously close. Um, We're having too much fun. That's too, much fun. too much fun. The fifth one I'm going to actually speed through because this is an underrated tool. It's not about creating content. It's actually about understanding your performance. So everybody has, if you have a business account, 
everybody has what's called a professional dashboard. So this is an example from Party Slates. There's many more screenshots that you'll get access to. You'll see your impressions, you'll see other metrics. There's this great new tool that they rolled out about uh, tips and best practices. So they're posting articles about what you can do. You know, we got a question about like, where do I start or which feature should I prioritize? Of course, Instagram is always gonna suggest what's in their best interest. So take this with a grain of salt, but it is really helpful to understand how does your performance vary from season to season? What posts are performing extremely well? So we really, really recommend taking a look at this, trying to understand what resonates with your audience. Cause like we've all been talking about today, everybody's audiences are completely different and completely different content is gonna resonate with those audiences. So last, obviously there's many more tools. We couldn't leave without talking about a couple more of these. We're, we're calling them honorable mentions because we promised to narrow it down to five, which we sort of did, but we have a couple more we just want to mention. So feed posts, Kristen, I love what you said that it's like classic Instagram content. CC, you also said it's your portfolio. Post there, What if somebody went and wanted to learn more about your business, it would be the best representation of who you are and who your business is. Highlights, there's an example from Party Slate up there. There are those little bubbles that you can save different categories of content. If people happen to go to your bio, I wouldn't recommend this is not an area that you need to start with, absolutely. It's more about investing in your brand. If people find your bio, they look at your bio, they wanna learn more about your past content, they could go there. And then guides, Natalie, I'd love to hear. Party Slate actually has not even experimented with guides yet. We, we are too overwhelmed with the rest of the content that we could create on Instagram. How did you get started with creating guides on Instagram? Uh, I believe it was like three o'clock in the morning and I just found it. <laughs> uh, it's again, our rhythm, rhythm just going. I'm like, what is this? So I was like, let me play some more. And I just started playing with it and started adding. So basically you can place your blogs and your posts and create just sections for people to see. So for example, the charming pastel birthday party, which was also featured on party slate, I posted it there. And so clients can see it on that end. And we can also that redirect it to our website and redirect it also to party slate. So it's just playing with Instagram. That's how I found it to be. I honest. love that. Isn't that how we all happen upon tools? It's like three o'clock in the morning. You're like, what's this? maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do this on? today. But I love it. I think it's a great cross between the posts and blogs. It gives you a little, an opportunity to create a little bit more information, but not too much. Um, and then the last one we want to mention is, of course, link in bio. I think we talked about this earlier. Ideally, we all strive for that swipe up feature. You want a swipe up feature. You want to get to 10,000 followers. If you're not there yet, it's OK. There's there's tons of link in bio features. We'd be happy to send a couple of examples. And it just allows you to drive traffic to your website. Natalie, I love that to your party slate profile. Anywhere that's really important for your business. If you have a new YouTube recording or a new TV show, anything that you want people to find out more about and take them away from Instagram, we really recommend using a link in bio tool. So we always love to leave you, and I'll pause in a second to see if we have any more questions, Marley, but we always love to leave everybody who's in attendance with an action plan because I think we can all agree that Instagram is overwhelming. There are endless ways to use it. It's always changing. So how can you get started today? So I think the first step is really create your Instagram strategy. Set your goals. Think about a template. Cece, I love what you were talking about your before, your buckets. We call them differentiators, whatever it is you want to call it. Think about how you're different and then how you will measure success. And then number two, optimize your Instagram content, update your bio with a strong handshake, take advantage of those 150 characters, choose content that resonates with your audience. We've said this many times, but what resonates with one person is not gonna resonate with somebody else. So make sure you're thinking about you and your brand, optimize your content based on those engagement metrics. And then three, I should have put try to master the features and tools that matter to you. That seems more fair, but master the tools. And I think the second part is most important. Like what matters to you and what's most important to you. So consider what those features are, test those features and tools before creating like 10 IGTVs, maybe try one and see how it does for your brand. And then again, post what works for your brand. So I'll pause first to see if the panelists have anything else to add, or if we have any other questions, Marley from the audience. Sure. I would say you really have to um, tap into your own workflow, right? All three of us, myself, Cece and Natalie, we are all very different um, creatives and creative people. And we have different creative process. Cece, 
clearly loves an action plan and loves to have everything planned out. Natalie sort of goes with the flow and discovers what works for her. I'm so I'm more of a fly by the seat of your pants person, emotional poster, right? And within all of that, within all of that. And it all know, works, right? It works. It does. It works because I think it comes from a place of authenticity, yes. right? You can't be anybody else but yourself. And I think that's the hardest thing to do when you're working in a business because we've been conditioned to believe that the client is always right. What's the client want? What's the client want? Well, the client doesn't know what they want. That's the truth. The client wants to feel confident. So if you can come out the gate being confident in what you're doing, and that doesn't mean you need to then go full tilt and be posting 12 times a day, make a realistic goal for yourself. Say, you know what? I want to post on Mondays and I want to post on Fridays and just try to start there and then maybe work up to, okay, I'm going to post Monday and Wednesday and Friday. And eventually you'll figure out a sweet spot that works for you. That's what it's really all about is not trying to be anybody else but yourself. And when you can do that with clarity and conviction, the money and all that stuff, that'll come to you. That Don't worry about that. You've got it. I love that. I love that. Kristen or Nat, or I'm sorry, Natalie or Cece, any final thoughts? I was just saying, don't look at the likes. Like, don't beat yourself up over that. Like, you know, I catch myself doing that. My team knows who are just like, Cece, it's okay. Like, we got a lead from this one. It turned into a real paying client. So, like, who cares if it didn't get a ton of likes? Like, it right. just messes with you. So, look at, think of the purpose, like, for the greater good of your business goals and feed into that and just keep feeding it and, like, just let it go. Like, it is what it is. And like, sometimes you just do it, shut it off and go focus on the thing that you love and like the crap that you are promoting anyways. Build more content that way, right? <laughs> I agree. I agree with Cece. You just have to focus on your main goal. And what is your business goal? Because as long as you know your business goal, then you'll be able to succeed in social media. For me, I like Kristen said, I just go with the flow. Like if it works for me at three o'clock in the morning, morning, I am posting at three o'clock in the morning. If it doesn't work for me at that time, I'm posting at 10. So whatever happens during that time is when I'm doing what needs to be done for Instagram. But um, I, I just go day by day. That's all I can do. Just go day by day. And hopefully when my OCD doesn't kick in, then I'm like, okay, converted. We're good. Yeah. I'm for like two weeks, and then I'm like, okay, I'm post again, you know, type of thing. I love so, it. So true. Go with the flow. I just want to so true. I just want to I thank think everyone for their transparency and their expertise. Um, there's a lot of of comments in the chat how this has been so helpful, and there needs to be more of this in our community of sharing and being transparent and helping each other. And so, just wanted to thank everyone who is on this panel. You have been incredible, and thanks to everyone that joined. I have learned so much from this panel. Yeah. Yeah, like I feel like every panel, I'm like I, I'm I should have been taking notes because I, know, right? I need you know, more information about what's being shared. Oh. But I think that we always, we are so so appreciative. And if you couldn't take notes, you were like too enthralled in the conversation with these these amazing panelists. We're gonna send out the recording. We'll send out this presentation. We're happy to our marketing team is happy to review your Instagram profile. If you're just not sure where to start, we are so happy to help you do that. And we have a couple of helpful tools I mentioned in the beginning. We have past Instagram webinars. We're happy to share those recordings. And then we do have that strategy template to help you get started. And then of course, if you're new to Party Slate, we would love, love, love to get a free Party Slate profile created for you so you can start adding more content there. Um, and anything else we can do to help. But I, I just have to echo Marley. Thank you, thank you to our panelists. I learned so much from all of you, from not just from your Instagram feeds, but everything that you shared today. Um, and we're, we're just so lucky to have had you join us today. Thank you for having us. We appreciate you, what you're doing so much. Yay, thank you. I'm so glad. And stay tuned. We have our next session coming up in just a few minutes, all about advanced LinkedIn and the power of digital networking. I know it's another social tool, but we promise it's one to prioritize. It's a good one. And it's, I think, really underutilized. So so stay tuned for Julie. Um, and she's going to be talking all about LinkedIn soon. And thank we're all you. everyone on Instagram. Are we all going on Clubhouse later, too? Oh, yes. Yeah. And don't miss us on Clubhouse. On don't miss us on Clubhouse at 5 o'clock Central. We'll see everyone there. See you then. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye, everyone. you.